Welcome to the Nexus 2 help guide. In this guide, we will talk about creating and using monitors. The objectives of this guide include answering what are monitors inside of Nexus 2 and how do I use them, followed by two examples of using monitors during live capture and one example of using monitors during offline playback. Monitors enable you to evaluate subject and device outputs. They can be thought of as an if-then statement so that if a specified condition or event occurs, then one or more actions is triggered. In my first example, we're going to trigger the capture based on a force plate threshold. I'll start by splitting my view and pulling up a graph. And now I can either select my force plate device and find the FZ component, or I can select the force plate in the 3D perspective and just choose the component that I want to graph and make a monitor for, which in this case is just FC. To create a monitor, I'm going to select this bell icon with a plus sign. When this icon is clicked, you will notice that the communications window automatically changes to the monitors tab in Nexus 2.7. We can now see that we've created a monitor for the FC component of our force plate. Next, we can choose our threshold mode. Above, upper, below, lower, between, or outside. For this application, we are going to choose below lower and set this to negative 20 newtons. As I scale my graph, you can see that the shaded region represents the values where my threshold is met. Next, we will set a trigger condition from the options. On enter, on exit, within, maximum value on exit, minimum value on exit, or always. For this example, I want my action to occur as soon as the condition is met so I will choose on enter. Next, we need to set the action that we want to occur when the condition is met. I'm going to choose capture and select start so that the start of my capture is triggered. I've also set up a trial type to capture one second before start and a total duration of four seconds. I will now arm and lock my live system so I can collect multiple trials in a row. As the participant contacts the force plate, the capture is triggered. The second live example I want to demonstrate provides the subject with real-time biofeedback. Let's say that I am doing a squat study and want my participants to reach a knee flexion angle greater than 90 degrees before returning to an upright position. To monitor real-time kinematics, you will need to have your output level set to kinematic fit. I can then choose the joints I want to monitor by selecting them from the 3D perspective or under the joints header from the subject tab. I can add the monitors separately or if multiple components are graphed, all components on the graph will be added to the monitors. For this example, I will be using the Boolean operator OR so that my condition will be met when either the left or right knee angles are greater than 90 degrees of flexion. To use the Boolean OR, I will select both of my monitors by either holding control on my keyboard or clicking and dragging to select both components. I will now add my action with the boolean or selected on the left hand side. I am going to play a sound file when my condition is met so that my participant knows when they can return to the upright position. For the offline example, We'll use monitors to tag events during biking so that we can normalize to one full revolution on the bike, similar to how we would normalize gait cycles from heel strike to heel strike. I'll start by splitting my screen and pulling up a graph view. Next, I'm going to choose the left and right ankle markers from the marker list and the subject's pane. I'll change my graph to the components, which will show me the X, Y, and Z components for these markers. I am only interested in the height component for my monitor, so I'll only graph the Z component and then add my monitors. Because the ankle markers are moving in a cyclical pattern with each revolution of the pedals, I can use a monitor to easily identify the bottom of each revolution for left and right sides. For each monitor, I'm going to select below lower and choose a height of 350 millimeters. For this condition, we want to select the minimum value on exit so that my action occurs at the lowest point of each curve. For my action, I want to add a time bar event 
so that I can use these events to normalize my cycle revolutions. I will select the appropriate context and choose a general event. I'll do the same thing for the right side. and select the right context in a general event. Now, during the first playback of my trial offline, my monitors are active and will add time bar events. For more information on using monitors and the other actions that can be performed, please click the link below. This concludes our video tutorial. If you have any questions about your hardware or software, please do not hesitate to contact us at support at